What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Mile Higher Podcast, episode 29. Yes, featuring your hosts, Kendall and Josh. We are back, guys. We are. Hello. How you doing? Today, we have a very interesting episode jam-packed with just mind-boggling information that we're going to be sharing with you all today. So we're very excited about it. Today, we're going to be talking about the legend of Oak Island. And you may have never heard of Oak Island. I actually found out about it not even that long ago. But it's a very interesting island. It has to do with missing treasure, possibly from everything from pirates to Shakespeare to even possibly... Um, the Knights Templar and the Freemason. So Ooh, it's very interesting and there's a lot of mystery and maybe a curse with it. It's kind of a different mysterious story that we've than we've done normally on the podcast. So yeah. we'll see how you guys like so it. requested actually. I've been getting requests for stuff on Oak Island for like three years. So finally doing it. Yes. I'm so excited because I actually knew nothing about it until we started looking into it this week. So I still am going to be learning a lot today. Yes. I don't know everything about it for sure. It's very interesting though. So we're excited to talk about that. But before we get into things, we just want to shout out our, our homies over at Bilegal Meds for oh, the yes. hemp CBD syrup. This guy's this guy this shit is good. I'm not gonna lie. I took this last night and like my dreams were phenomenal. phenomenal. <laughs> you always talk about the dreams. You love the it, dreams that it gives you. It gives me there's something in this syrup that just gives me some great dreams. So. It lets you get into a deeper sleep, which allows you to dream. So it makes sense. Um, but yes. yeah, for me, it's like I have pain and I wake up in the middle of the night, like around four or five every morning. I start waking up every 30 minutes or so. So when I take cloud nine, I feel like I can sleep longer, like six or seven. Yes. It definitely lets me sleep, go back to sleep easier and stay asleep longer. So I love this stuff. You guys know I've been heavily relying on CBD products like every day because of my health issues. So today I'm using the CBD tincture. Yeah, 5,000 milligrams of pure mm -hmm. CBD hemp. So not at one in one serving. Yeah, in the whole tincture. <laughs> I'd be like asleep, but it's really, really helps me so much. Like I've had such, I've did two videos today. We're doing the podcast and I feel good. I have energy. I'm excited. Like I'm feeling, I don't have any pain right now. So yeah. And just, just takes, shout them takes out the nerves off it. and you know, we really do. We're, we're fans of the products. And what's great is that we've been able to offer anybody out there listening 20% off their order at bilegalmeds.com. And don't forget, this is legal in all 50 States. This is not marijuana. This is CBD. Just clarifying because yes. you do get comments. <laughs> so yeah, if you use the code mile higher, you will get 20% off your order. And again, there's all sorts of products, the syrups, there's even pre-roll CBD joints. Hell yes, yeah. CBD joints, not marijuana, CBD hemp joints. They're yeah, very and good. CBD flour, you can grind it up and use it like... Yeah, yeah. smoke it in whatever you want. So yeah. it's good. <laughs> good stuff. I use the flour. It's really good, but they're out of it right now. So definitely Wait. check them out. It's on high demand. <laughs> it is. It is. But our is. other favorite product we just like to share with y'all is, is Monk. You We've talked know. about this before. Really does help take the edge off. I love the Zen Monk. Probably my favorite, honestly. I have to use the Zen Monk now every time before I film. I have to sit down and take like three deep breaths with a Zen Monk and kind of have a moment of meditation. And it is it's very nice. It's great stuff. So if you want 10% off monk, your monk order, just hit that link in the description. Hell yeah. And yeah, so let's, uh, well, I guess lastly, before we jump into things, we just want to thank Hannah F. She was a new stellar patron this month because everybody in the patron family has just been so awesome and supportive. We, yes. we love all you guys. Anybody that's donated in any way, shape or form. Thank you. You're it's helped the podcast, podcast grow. Yes, it has. It really has. And yeah. It's and if you missed our last great. episode, we explained how we're actually converting our whole basement into a podcast studio right now. So it's really helping. Yes, that's literally I'm taking the money from Patreon, <laughs> putting it towards the podcast. So you guys are literally funding this. And you're going to allow us to have guests on one day. You're going to allow us to, you know, make it big with it. Yeah. All you guys are on the ground floor of what's going to yeah. be a Grass legendary roots. podcast. <laughs> okay. So, so yes, we just want to thank you. And uh, today I just checked and there was like 4,000 reviews on iTunes already. Like that's Damn, crazy. That's and we're awesome. climbing the charts already. We haven't like, even hit 30 episodes. That's crazy. That's nuts, man. We're it's so absolutely crazy. Like seriously, thank all of you guys who have gone onto iTunes and left a rating or a review. We really appreciate yeah, just it. Just on the stars, like just even you know, it helps. Whatever it, stars it helps, you want to give us <laughs> helps us be more visible and like yeah. we see every week. I, at least I see new people that have just found us that uh, have stumbled mm -hmm. upon the Malhar podcast. So 
that is awesome but this week's question patreon question comes from emily h and this is actually going to segue into the first topic that i wanted to cover today and that is do you believe the theory of evolution to be true and if so do you think humans will survive long enough to evolve into something different or will we or possibly something else make ourselves extinct before we have a chance to that's a Ooh. very loaded question damn loaded <laughs> So this is one of the things that I've wanted to talk about and because it's just so interesting to think about and that's this idea of is evolution really the the theory that explains how everything came to be what we call life. Don't you think it's a little ballsy for anyone to claim they know that that is the way we came to be like it's not a lot to hang your hat on at the end of the day because I mean how would anyone fully know that. Well that's the thing and when you look back at how we came up with this theory of evolution you look at you know obviously Charles Darwin mm -hmm. um, who came up with the theory and you know over years and years of, of research and observing different things realize that there is evolution and I'm not saying that evolution is not a real thing yeah or that it doesn't happen evolution is very real because yeah, obviously things we evolve. evolve yeah things evolve yes. but I don't I don't know that evolution can explain how everything came to be and how and how we got here. such complex beings can come from evolution by itself yeah because technically we're supposed to be flatworms like that's what we came from right and just over millions of years slowly but surely we've evolved from that to mm. this this whole thing you're seeing so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's a very interesting know. thing and and this is the reason why i wanted to to bring i want to answer this patreon question because there's actually something called an organization called descent from darwin and basically, it's a group of scientists, 500 plus scientists, these are PhDs, mm -hmm. pe really, really intelligent people that have all signed this document, essentially, that rejects Darwin's theory of evolution for being, ever, you know, explaining how everything has come to be today. Now, what does that mean exactly? So the main thing with this is that during recent decades, there's been tons of new scientific evidence from many scientific disciplines, such as cosmology, physics, biology, artificial intelligence research, and others which have caused scientists to begin this questioning of Darwinism's central tenet of natural selection. That's the big thing too with uh, Darwin's version of evolution is the um, na natural selection, so kind of survival of the fittest. And so scientists have been looking at this in greater detail. But what's interesting to me is that public TV programs, educational policy statements, and science textbooks which I remember, mm. have asserted that Darwin's theory of evolution fully explains the complexity of living things. <laughs> no. And basically, the public has been assured that all known evidence supports Darwinism and that virtually every scientist in the world believes the theory to be true. Mm -hmm. So that's what's interesting about this descent from Darwin is that it's this list, which is all these scientists that dispute this first claim of evolution. And it, the list is growing larger and larger. There's scientists from the U.S. National Academy of Sciences. There's Russian, Hungarian, Czech, as well as tons of other universities, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, MIT, UC Berkeley, mm -hmm. UCLA, tons and tons of scientists. So, you know, m one person might be like, oh, these are religious scientists, which some of them probably are, because, you know, if you come from any sort of religious background, you're obviously going to disagree with evolution and Darwinism that, you know, we all evolve yeah from you know yeah. whatever yeah that's true so it's it's just interesting though that even people that aren't religious are starting to think that there may be something more to this than yeah sort of what's been presented to us so far what we've gathered so far from life right i'm i'm curious just with the whole going back to the rh negative blood i love talking about it because i found out i am rh negative after we did the video on it and i just i find that so interesting that that cannot be traced back to apes i'm always scared to talk about evolution because there's always some biologist well, it that, makes like, screams sense because <laughs> like <laughs> no being... well that's the thing is like there is a we do share dna with a chimpanzee 96 percent of okay. our dna is matched right. to a chimp right so you can see how they would have okay this makes sense the dna leads but not here. for rh negative can't go back to it that's well yeah rh negative just throws a whole wrench into it and probably something that these the scientists, scientists have talk about. exactly mm -hmm. I wanted to read just a statement from one of the scientists because I think it's interesting he says um, this is professor Colin Reeves from the Department of Mathematical Sciences 
uh, from Coventry University. And he says that Darwin Darwinism was an interesting idea in the 19th century when hand weaving or hand waving explanations gave a plausible, if not properly scientific framework into which we could fit biological facts. However, what we learned is science the days of Darwin or Darwin throws doubt on natural selection's ability to create complex biological systems. And we still have little more than hand waving as an argument in its favor. This is also interesting uh, that Chris Williams, uh, PhD biochemist from Ohio State University said, he said, as a biochemist and software developer who works in genetic and metabolic screening, I'm continually amazed by the incredible complexity of life. For example, each of us has a vast computer program of 6 billion DNA bases in every cell that guided our development from a fertilized egg. Uh, specifies how to make more than 200 tissue types and ties all this together in numerous highly functional organ systems. Few people outside of genetics or biochemistry realize that evolutionists still can provide no substance, uh, substantive details at all about the origin of life and particularly the origin of genetic information in the first cell replicating organism. What genes did it require or did it even have genes? How much DNA and RNA did it have or did it have nucleic acids and basically that is really what blows my mind is like when you look at it from a very very basic fundamental level it's like in the very first organism where did that dna come from yeah because like evolution explains the the you know evolution Form of, of the, species and things like that but it doesn't explain where it started how how did it get there how did yeah. this organism get there Mm -hmm. doesn't explain the beginning of well, life. Well, it leaves a lot of questions, which, I, I mean, it should. How could anyone really know? Like, obviously, right. we're going to have a lot of questions. But the whole thing with this is, like, should we only be teaching Darwin's theory of evolution in schools to students? Or should we be looking at other options or, or considering all of the scenarios? Like, you present all of the scenarios to kids, or do you just go with, like, what's most scientifically proven up to this point? I feel like... We're very far off from them just ditching Darwinism in school like very far off There'd have to be some pretty good evidence and like a lot more people than just 500 scientists for them to you know Change anything in school. I think um, They're gonna continue teaching Yeah, Darwin. they're not gonna be like oh by the way unless you have like a good teacher that like seeks this information out and like Or just you go tells to like you. a charter or private school or something. That yeah has a different curriculum, right? so There's a there's a lot of like <laughs> In my head, a lot of like theological questions come up about like teaching evolution and things like that. And now I, I feel like I understand how some people are like, why do we only get like one version of, of things in school? And I think that goes for a lot of things, especially like history, mm -hmm. as we'll, you know, as we'll learn more today. But it just seems like, you know, I guess they have to do it in a uniform way that makes sense so they can push it out to, you know, all sorts of schools across the country and you know, there's got to be some you know Similarness to all of the different curriculums, but I just wonder if maybe you know We might be able to aid the next generation and aid the young minds into thinking more critically about things and allowing them Imagine being young and being able to like look at different things and be like, oh, what do you think about that? Yeah. What do you think about that theory? Yeah, and kind of like talk about it amongst based. versus yourselves versus like Here's what it is recite it memorize it and come back to class on <laughs> yeah. Tuesday and take a test and on it I'm Don't like, question it <laughs> and don't question it exactly exactly. Yeah, that's bad I feel like And that's they're supposed bad. to be teaching critical thinking like You know, it should be something where people can look at multiple different versions of ideas of things and and just kind of Decide what they think makes the most sense right and mainstream education teaches us that 99% of DNA links is indicative of where we come from yet we share approximately 65% with a banana. <laughs> Did you know that? Nice. 65% of our DNA can be matched to a banana. So it's like Ooh, maybe so that's it's why like, the fat maybe Michael the DNA banana, like went away. <laughs> it's just like us, it got sick. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> They're always trying to do bananas wrong, man. They're always trying to hurt the banana. I know. But that's just interesting to me and maybe there's, you know, maybe there's like some like deeper Conspiratorial level to all of the education system and the you know <laughs> yeah, mind control and all this and that so Maybe it's like that, but I just think like we need to like be thinking critically from a young age We should be questioning everything from a young yeah. age. We should be exposed to 
as much as we can so we can allow ourselves to evolve mm -hmm. and get to a point where we can start making critical decisions far earlier than than where yeah. we're at because the last couple generations it was like years and years and years before yeah you know they really started diving into things so yeah that's just my my opinion it's also set in stone it's like a shame that there's no room for people to question things or think last thing on this there was a gallup poll in 2014 which revealed that in the united states alone almost half of the population believe that there's something more to the origins of human existence than the two options that are constantly presented to the masses they believe that there is something more than darwin's theory of evolution and i think our human intuition is really pointing us to something else you know whether it's i agree panspermia where you know another uh, that's honestly what i'm starting to think is like another civilization another planet with beings or wherever it is i think the majority of people just have here. a natural feeling about there being something more and having you have this like thing inside you that like questions where you came from and i don't even know how to explain it it's like a feeling that we all have or some people turn off obviously but i think that keeps people from saying oh yeah we know the the truth about it because i think a lot of people know that we don't know a lot about where we came from what the meaning of life is like we really don't know right most people like know that and accept that and that's why they can say no on the gallup poll but a lot of people need something to explain you know those questions those questions that just keep us all up at night some people need the answers so you know, I, I think it's just instead of presenting one option, I think we should present many. Yeah, I agree. Is my moral of the story. <laughs> moral. <laughs> present all the options. Let the person decide what works for them and what makes sense to them. Yeah. That's all I'm saying, man. But speaking of stoned, <laughs> Stonehenge, guys. Stonehenge. Were we speaking of stone? Uh, you said stones, I think. I, I inserted stone, but... Stonehenge. <laughs> Some big news with Stonehenge this week, actually. Stonehenge is one of those places that is pretty, pretty mind boggling. Yes. You know, and those of you that live near Stonehenge, I'm pretty jealous, honestly, because some major shit could have went down at Stonehenge at some point in history. Like, mm -hmm. we have a full video like, on it if cool you're curious shit. about it. We do. I forgot. We do have a video on Kendall's channel about Stonehenge. Mm -hmm. But I just wanted to talk about a new um sort of ground bake baking ground, ground <laughs> a new ground baking <laughs> discovery that happened this week, okay? So the ancient mystery of who built Stonehenge has been solved according to a new study. The groundbreaking new analysis of 25 cremated remains buried at the prehistoric monument in Wiltshire has revealed that 10 of them lived nowhere near the blue stones. Instead, they came from Western Britain, and half of those 10 possibly came from 140 miles away in southwest Wales. So how the fuck were they moving those? They're huge. These are massive, massive stones, very heavy. And the remaining 15 people could be locals from the Wiltshire area or other descendants of the migrants from the West. So the first of all, they found remains at the ruins a while back. So they've identified where these people were from most likely and it's possible they were a potential mix of men and women and they were of high social status which is interesting so again some type of i feel like it was used for some type of ceremonial you know use like what were they what do you think they were doing at stonehenge well the fact that it goes with the um solstices really makes you think that there was a reason for that so i think they were doing something spiritual Absolutely. Surrounded by not only that, but oftentimes crop circles show up around Stonehenge a lot. Yeah, they do. It's which really is weird. interesting. And crop circles is a whole nother thing on itself. But it just maybe there's something to Stonehenge or honestly, I think that there's something underground Stonehenge that we have. That's just below the surface oh, interesting. that we didn't know. They've detected that there's. They, things I was going to ask, there's, has anyone taken like a metal detector out there? Yeah. No, they know there's bare, like there could be, I don't know, tunnels oh, or there could be a sense. whole it could thing be marking that was there. Something. Yeah. Because when you think about it, it's like, why would they care about some rocks like stood up in a circle? 
that there's no roof you know it's like yeah. what what's the point of that yeah unless there's something below it that maybe it was like the top interesting of. very interesting right mm -hmm. so these this team of scientists they can't guarantee that the remains are of people who actually built the monument the earliest cremation dates are described as tantalizingly close to the date when the blue stones were brought in to form the first stone circle the key breakthrough though was that high temperatures of cremation can crystallize a skull storing the chemical signal of its origins hmm. that's really crazy that is that's very interesting interesting so in previous studies they've concentrated on stones henges construction including the sourcing of the stones and their transport from over 100 miles away in modern day pembrokeshire very little has been unearthed about the individuals who built it. So the new study, which was published in the Journal of Scientific Reports, shows that both people and materials were flowing between areas around 5,000 years ago, and that some of these people stayed put in the region. When they passed away, their cremated remains were placed under the ancient monument in what is now Wiltshire. The earliest bones have been dated to about 3,000 BC, and then a span a range of around 500 years. Wow. Basically, the range of dates raises the possibility that for centuries people could have brought to stone or could have been brought to Stonehenge for burial with the stones. Hmm. So basically, there's a connection between <coughs> buried remains, cremated remains, and indicating that maybe these were the people that actually built Stonehenge. It seems that way, but how the hell are they hauling heavy, heavy blue stones? Miles away. That doesn't 5, make any sense. plus years ago. I just don't get it. They had some sort of technology. Whether yeah. I, I mean, I guess they could be doing it by like cruel sleds and carts. But no, I think they really on. were way more advanced than people give them credit for. Um, and we always like to think like maybe aliens helped, but maybe they were just really way smarter than we are told they were, and way more advanced than we're told. It's got to be something like that because it just doesn't make sense. I mean, <coughs> I, I don't know. Well, that would be a, a feat in itself today yeah. or even a hundred years ago. Like imagine the 1800s if they had to haul blue stones. Like, yeah. why didn't we see more like stone, you know, yeah. monoliths and things like that later on in history? Like yeah. it was all in this like thousands of years ago period where that we see these, these monuments are grand, made. grand monoliths and pyramids and you know temples yeah, and palaces so that are just like made out of pure stone marble all these different materials that are like exotic really yeah exotic materials that usually aren't just like some mm -hmm. like stones in the river and like no, some the, trees the or something pyramids were completely covered in limestone it's just gone now but it's just like what was going on dude and that's what's just like the most interesting and intriguing thing about questioning history is that there could be a totally different story that we don't know yet. Isn't it frustrating to think about all the things we don't know? <laughs> oh, it drives me crazy. It's I'm painful. Like, oh. It hurts my soul not to know, know everything. I've had to really come to terms with like not knowing things because I'm constantly researching unsolved mysteries and conspiracy theory and things with just no final answers. And it sucks. It eats my soul away. It does. It's it's rough, man. It is. But it, to me. I just want to know it all. I hope like when you die, you get to know it all. If you were to die, what is one thing you would want to know the answer to? Not something like, what's the meaning of life? But like, one specific thing. An event. I think we've been asked this question yeah, before. Yeah, we have, but I'm asking. Like, what would you want to know about? Hmm. Definitely. I mean, obviously, pyramids would be cool. Um. I would want to know about, like, like, life before, like, interplanetal planet communication like if there were people living on mars that were communicating with people on earth was that ever a thing right was there ever like a earth was mars ever earth were we ever in touch with anything from another space? civilization yeah yeah yeah. So, yeah yeah i mean that would be definitely something i want to know yeah <laughs> i don't know I'll i guess keep, we have probably answered that before but i'll keep thinking on that question okay <laughs> I'll have an answer for next time. I need to think deeply on it for a while. Uh, there's so many things I'd want to ask, though. This world drives me crazy. Because, I mean, obviously, like, you know, I'm not going to want to know about, like, government corruption or something because I already know that that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. 
I'd want to know also, like, is there anything like wild on the bottom of the ocean that I, that we don't know That's about? That's a good question. Too. Like, is there like another civilization living down there? Like, there could be, and we may never know. Dude, the stuff underneath there. Oh, I know. Mm -hmm. I, w I would probably want to know if there is an inner Earth civilization, probably. Is there an inner Earth civilization? Would be my question. <laughs> don't laugh. I don't know anything don't laugh. about that theory, don't so laugh. I can't really say. There's a lot of evidence, my friend. That there's a hollow We'll do Earth. it on a podcast. That there is an inner Earth civilization <laughs> that exists right now. I have trouble with all the Earth things, like flat Earth, and I just like can't understand it. That's another one. Is the Earth flat? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. I've seen it from a plane and it looks round. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Before we get too far off another day. <laughs> but before we get into talking about Oak Island and the money pit that's there, the famous money pit. Money it's pit. a very, very big mystery about this money pit. So before we get into that, we just want to quickly thank today's sponsor, Skillshare, for sponsoring the episode today. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 20,000 classes in design, photo, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. Skillshare believes in accessible learning, and the price reflects that. An annual subscription with unlimited access is less than $10 a month. That is such a good deal, for real. Best deals for online education, and online ed education is huge. I love it. I use it. And it is very convenient because you can do it straight from your your bed mm -hmm. on your phone, you know, on your computer, whatever. It's very convenient. Learn while you're brushing your teeth. Yeah, exactly. And since Skillshare is sponsoring today's video, the first 500 people to use the promo link in the description will get their first two months free to try it out. Two risk months. Free. That's so generous. You normally see 30 days. Dude, jump on that, you guys. That link gets used every time. Yes, and it does fill up. So it's very nice. I like to watch a lot of the drone filming stuff because that's where I need a lot of work. <laughs> and there's just a lot of interesting classes on there on all sorts of things from drawing to business type stuff, marketing. I mean, there's all sorts of really interesting classes on there that I'm sure any of you out there could enjoy. So the again, the first 500 people to sign up will receive a two month trial. All you got to do is go to skl.sh slash mile higher three to start your free trial. Now do it. Do it. <laughs> all right, guys, let's talk about Oak Island. Okay. Oak Island is located off the coast of Nova Scotia near Halifax in the eastern part of Canada. This 140 acre island is privately owned and is best known for its supposed buried treasure, especially at a certain spot commonly known as the Money Pit. Hmm. Since its discovery, Around the end of the 18th century, a number of theories have been put forward to explain the nature of the legendary treasure in the money pit. Can of I Oak ask Island. something? Yes. How it was it just like discovered in the 18th century? If like, how do they even know there's anything down there? Nobody knows. So how did, how <laughs> was it discovered in the eight? Is that when someone said there would yeah, be explain, something? Yeah, there? I'll explain the, how it was discovered. Okay. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, so how they just randomly guessed that this hole has a pit of money somewhere deep down there? Yes. And everyone believed An that. alien came down and told them <laughs> that there's this money pit. So, in addition, many attempts to unearth the treasure has been made in the following centuries, though these have yet to have been met with success. Nevertheless, efforts continue even today in the form of a TV show, with the hope that a fantastic treasure will eventually be found on the mysterious Oak Island. Yeah, I've seen like a ton of previews for that show. Yeah. So, the Money Pit is reported to have been discovered in the summer of 1795, a long time ago, when a teenager by the name of Daniel McGinnis came across a circular depression in the ground whilst exploring the island. McGinnis decided to investigate the pit with a few friends and over the next couple of days he along with his friends john smith and anthony vaughn began to dig a hole so they so according to again this is 1795 we don't have this on a vlog or anything guys okay <laughs> this is a fucking pit in the ground for all we know i'm just saying for all we know this could have been you know what if he just made an animal up? digging a hole for its family or something that they saw 
But according to the story, it looked clearly like a dig site, like somebody had buried something there, mm -hmm. which in legends of old, when you talk about pirates, like pirates are often associated with treasure and burying treasure. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the 1795, if you're a kid, you're like, holy shit, maybe a pirate buried his treasure here. Yeah, I actually, yeah, back then, especially because they like, it's not like they had TV and stuff. They're like reading books. About that was the thing. Oh, stuff. yeah, that was the thing is like. Yeah, they're you know, like, oh, treasure. The infamous Yo -ho. pirates. Yeah, the infamous pirates mm -hmm. that roam the seas. Interesting. I, I mean, I could definitely see why they decided to investigate. Yeah. So what happened? They started digging? Yes. So two feet from the surface, the boys struck a layer of flagstones. They continued digging, and at a depth of a 10 feet, they came across a layer of oak logs. God, people were bored back then to dig a 10-foot hole. <laughs> Damn. Well, if you think there's That's treasure, a I'd That's dig like a, a hole, too. a full day of contract work. That's true. But two more layers of oak logs were encountered again at 20 feet and at 30 feet below the surface. Damn, they dug they deep. They dug deep. They, they dug they deep. They literally did. <laughs> real deep. And at the point, the boys were no longer able to continue on their own. They decided to go home after digging the 30-foot hole. They decided to go home. With the intention home. of returning to continue their search. So does this mean that this all happened in one day? We're supposed to believe they dug a 30-foot <sighs> hole in one day? According to the story, yes. Okay, Which, so they were like, all right, you know seven, what? It was three of them. Three At of least them we had fun down. together digging today. Let's just go home, though. Clearly, <laughs> it was a waste. 30 feet? So their whole thing that obviously interested them was that while digging down, they came across these stones and then a layer of oak logs. So if you think about it, if you're digging down and you came across oak logs deep underground, you'd be like, yeah. What the hell? You'd be like, what is below? Obviously, something is in here. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, point. why is there a fucking tree 20 feet so why'd the they just go home did they come back yeah <laughs> eight years later eight years later eight years later they came back because they they figured that they they would have to get more resources and get a company together to fucking dig this thing out completely because oh. they probably just dug like a little hole like if you think about it, it was like a shovel like it was 30 one. feet so they probably were like we don't have the ability to dig out a huge massive operation they're they're young so they waited till they were later, and McGinnis and his friends returned to their dig site along with the Onslow Company, which was established for the purpose of excavating the money pit. And at this point, they continued digging until a depth of 90 feet. And at each interval of 10 feet, a layer of oak logs were discovered. Wow. So that is clearly, like, naturally that doesn't happen. So you no. have to think Someone that, did that somebody put these logs in here. Like, yeah. Would you keep digging? Oh, uh, yeah, I would keep digging. Because especially in like this time, like if you found like a chest of gold coins or something, you were like, yeah, instant. And I fame, can see like, how these guys were Forbes. like, you know what? Let's wait. Like, let's grow up and then together we'll do this and we'll dig it out and we'll get a ton of money and that'll be like our life. Right. Exactly. That's exactly what they thought. Hmm. So not only that, but they found a layer of charcoal, putty and coconut fiber. Coconut which fiber. was reportedly found at depths of 40 feet, 50 feet, and 60 feet, respectively. So that's Damn. weird, too. So clearly this has been planned out. Mm -hmm. Somebody orchestrated whatever is buried here Holy shit. and built all of this. And it must be something good if they went to all this length. Now, just wait. This is this is where, <laughs> uh, okay, I was like, ah, cool. They're digging for treasure. whoop de doo But this is interesting. At 90 feet... A stone with an inscription was found, and the writing on the stone consists of symbols which has been commonly de deciphered as follows. 40 feet below, Whoa. 2 million pounds are buried. And there's Whoa. a stone that has the symbols on it that some have compared to like hieroglyphics, even though they don't touch hieroglyphics, but it reminds me of like maybe like greek symbols yeah roman symbols but it's not like theirs that's not like anything i've ever seen it almost looks like partly computer code <laughs> seriously <laughs> kind of yeah with the dots and everything yeah there's like dots but then there's like triangles there looks like there's a percentage sign at a the cross end on it what the hell it almost looks like an equation yeah exactly interesting so they they allegedly found the stone and believing that the treasure lied beneath this mysterious stone. They removed it from the pit to uncover yet another layer of wood. 
rather than the bounty of treasure that they believed would surely lie beneath it. As nightfall descended, the party disbanded due to poor visibility and water becoming an increasing problem the deeper they dug. All digging was aborted until daylight as it was thought that the pirate riches could wait one more night in the ground, having been buried for any number of years already. And in their minds, they believe that pirates must have left the island and left this treasure behind. So, mistake. Mistake on their part, because this is this becomes the reoccurring thing with the money pit. So the next day, no work took place on the pit due to religious commitments. It was a Sunday, but the group returned to Oak Island on Monday, eager to recover their treasure, only to find the shaft flooded with seawater. Wow. All the way up, up to ten about meters. 10 meters from the surface. Wow. And all excavation attempts to pump and bail out the water failed, resulting in the pit containing water at a constant level 10 meters from the top. Digging became impossible in this situation. The project was abandoned for one year. All the workers returned to their farms and looked forward to continuing the search in the springtime. It was decided that a separate treasure shaft be dug next to the original one in order to allow the flood water to pass into this new chamber. Oh, that's kind of smart. Which, yeah. They're using their heads. They're thinking, let's try a different shaft. And at a depth of 33.5 meters, the original shaft was tunneled into but to no avail. The diggers were lucky to escape with their lives as the walls of the new shaft caved in. Oh, wow. Leaving the original shaft flooded up to the level of 10 meters below the surface again. Damn. So they tried another way in, but they, they can't get the water out of this thing. So Smith began to despair in their misfortunes, believing that they had been beaten by nature. He gave up accepting the treasure to be out of their grasp, a feeling many were to experience in the future, even with the use of metal detectors and radar. So that's one of the most Ooh. kind of interesting things about it is it almost seems like this thing is like booby trapped in a way. Like whoever yeah. built it knew that either it would fill. built it maybe as like a decoy to try to like deter people from maybe maybe the treasures in a totally different place or maybe. Ooh. Yeah, that's smart. so this is just like because think about it. If you have treasure that you know is worth a lot of money. Are you going to bury it and then leave like a flag basically like come come dig here. They literally left like it was found looking like a burial site, site of some sort or a dig site. Interesting. But so, why even put that there? And this is common too that they would do these decoy sites. They would like think everybody should dig here. But meanwhile, it's just a giant just decoy. Somewhere else. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. But wait till we see what they find. All right. So the search for the money pit treasure was abandoned for about half a century after this before it was resumed in 1849 by the Truro Company. Once again, the problem of flooding is encountered. The company decides to figure out what was buried in the pit before attempting to continue digging, and for this purpose, drilling core samples, in which were supposedly containing a layer of spruce followed by one of oak and then metal pieces. Interesting. They should have done a, a drill core from the beginning, figure well, out what yeah, they were like about to face. They probably, I mean, this was till 1849, so, you know, technology yeah, had to, oh, had to, uh, <laughs> someone, that just reminds Spam. somebody always comments that our phones go off like every episode, at least oh, once. Well, they I'm hear a sorry. Ding. Well, apologies. We're not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I wanted to mention that was interesting that, um, and, and one of the documentaries I watched is that during this time in the 1800s, when they apparently somebody claimed that when they drilled their drill bit down really deep into the money pit, when they brought it back up, there was gold dust on the blade. But there was oh, no, wow. but this is like all hearsay. So they got right to it and then it just. Right. So they kept digging and continued to just find another layer of oak wood, metal pieces and spruce. And with these findings, it was concluded that there were two casks of chess or chess of gold coins waiting to be discovered in the money pit. So they, because they found like the gold dust, they they think that wow. there, there is chests of gold coins down there. Damn. But they just can't get to them. So Has the, anyone else tried digging down, like doing a drill sample nowadays that you know of? Sorry yeah, if it's off yeah the I believe line. so, yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll get to I it. I believe they keep, no, I 
they continue digging even until now. No, I know, but the drill. Oh, like I don't know doing if they're the doing. The, I don't. I why don't, don't know. they try and bring up more of the gold and like confirm that it's gold? Well, I think they have, and nothing came up. Oh, nothing. That that's the thing about it. But you're spoiling the end. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, back to the story. The trail company tried digging a parallel shaft, much like the company before, and connecting a tunnel in the following year. But like the Onslow company before them, they were not successful. The trail company eventually gave up, and several attempts to locate the treasure were made in the following century and a half, with various discoveries being claimed to have been made at the mysterious site on Oak Island. At a depth of 160 feet, for instance, a cement vault believed to contain the treasure was reported to have been discovered in 1897. Despite all these attempts, the treasure of the money pit has yet to be found, and the effort continues even today. So that's the thing a lot with this Oak Island money pit is the legend of it. There, there's a lot of legend surrounding it. Like there's mm -hmm. this, there's this vault there. There's coins there. So kind of this like hearsay that people, you know, kind of pass on keeps the yeah. legend going. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a lot of what, what the money pit is. Is. Mm -hmm. is that we think based upon what we've heard other people say that there is treasure there. But conclusively, we like as far as physical evidence has been little. Mm. One of the things that kind of makes this Oak Island money pit famous as well is the fact that uh, people have died excavating this thing. I was going to say, I bet, I bet it's cursed too. It is. I, I'm pretty sure it is cursed, probably. And here's why. So, among all the stories created by this enigma that there's treasure will evade discovery until seven people die trying to capture it. And this is part of the legend is like after seven, seven people die, there'll be the pit will finally release the treasure to when did the last person die? It's been a, it's been a while since it. So it <laughs> hasn't come to fruition uh, yet. I see <laughs> the 1960s was the rest all expedition. And this is where people died. Unfortunately, damn, that's sad. So prior to arriving on Oak Island, Robert Restall had become well acquainted with adventure. In fact, not long after meeting and marrying his young wife, Mildred Restall enlisted his bride in a spectacular traveling show. The act was called Globe of Death and involved the couple whipping around a large steel sphere on motorcycles, you know, like oh, driving yeah. around in the, the ball. They've been doing mm -hmm. that a long time. Uh -huh, they do that at circuses. Yep. Exactly. The daredevils. Yeah, they still call them that. In Funny. speeds up to 65 miles per hour. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It is it's crazy. If you've never seen that, thing. it's just Google it. It's, it's very wild. Daredevil motorcycle thing. But this couple performed throughout Europe in the 1930s before moving their act to Canada. And by 1955, the couple had settled in Hamilton, Ontario, and raised two sons and a daughter. As Mildred Restall described in 1965, once Robert had heard about the money pit mystery, it became his pursuit. And this is what often happens with people especially treasure hunters, once they kind of get their minds set that there's something to recover here, they set out doing whatever they have to. To get it. Right. So Robert Restall set out collecting articles and information on the site and determined to learn everything about the island, including the reasons others had failed. After years of building enthusiasm, Restall negotiated a deal with owner Mel Chapel in 1959, and in exchange for 50% of any recovered treasure, Restall was given full rights to operate the pit. And within the month, Restall re relocated him and his eldest son to the modest island. The former stunt drive turned Pablo Plumber began his plumber. <laughs> plumber. plumber. <laughs> That's good. I like that. That's, plumber. I always I give like you that shit too. for I'm like gonna... mistakes when you're reading it. I can't even read it all, so <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm not. So don't hate over there. Plumber, that was plumber. pretty good though. That I was like pretty that. Good. <laughs> I wish it was actually called a plumber. Gotta call the plumber. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually great. I'm gonna start calling our plumber that. What's up, plumber? <sighs> but anyway, the plumber <laughs> had only eight thousand dollars worth of capital equipment to start digging at the money pit, and some of this had been borrowed from outside investors, while the remainder of it represented the family's own savings. Immediately, Restall and his son set to work. By July of 1960, the two managed to remove water from the main shaft to a level not seen in decades. Wow. So this thing has just been filled with water. Yeah. Wow. And that year, the rest of Restall's family moved to Oak Island to help in the excavation. Over the next five years, Restall's dedicated their lives to Oak Island and the pursuit of the fabled riches. 
The family lived in two primitive cabins, which had no running water. Their fresh water was gathered from snowmelt and rain collected in a depression left by a dynamite blast many years before. At times, they would visit the mainland for supplies, but would always return to Oak Island, driven by Robert Restall's constitution and certainty that he would capture the pirate's treasure. But sadly for Mildred, this unique chapter in her family's history ended abruptly on Tuesday, August 17th, oh no. 1965. As she recalled, her husband intended to visit Halifax that afternoon. Restall and his son had been working on digging a new shaft on one of the beaches. And sometime after 2 p.m., as Restall peered over the edge of the tunnel to inspect his work, he succumbed to noxious gas emanating oh. from the pit. Wow. Restall then lost consciousness and <gasps> fell into the watery shaft. When his son Bobby witnessed this episode, he dashed in after his father, dived in, <gasps> only to be claimed by the toxic fumes as well. How do we know it was toxic fumes? If they were, did they recover their bodies? Yeah. Okay. That's why. I thought they like went into the pit. They were like, well, they had to pull them out somehow. But it's a deep pit. If you're That's what I'm about saying. This, if you deep. were to drown, you could go like far down. It'd be hard to like find someone. It would be. Interesting. Okay. So then what? So another person uh, or two other people who are workers as well, Carl Grasser and uh, Cyril Hiltz also rush in to help. Both also suffered the same fate as Restall and his son. Damn. And at the end of the day, Oak Island had claimed a total of six people since the beginning yeah they have a memorial stone oak island 1919 so oh, one sorry. two so <laughs> six people six known people yeah see one two three four five six yeah but i believe there's seven total or maybe this was after this yeah. was all like this at is the 1995 same time. so yeah it looks like they're like adding people yeah jeez so what I, I don't know what this gas would be emanating from this pit and why would it have only come up at that moment? That would have to be really strong, too. Yeah, and almost have, like, released because they've been around It'd it like, plenty <sighs> of time. They had been doing this for a long time, right? Yeah. It's not like all of a sudden this was the first time it. he looked over it. Yeah. So why why was it all of a sudden? That's so weird. There's that's something. why I was curious. Like, how do we even know that that's what it was? But they did autopsies on them? You don't know? <laughs> I don't know for sure, but um, they don't have their autopsy report in there. I'm gonna look it up. This is a legend. This isn't a legend though. This no, is 1965. Well, yeah, well, yeah this but is I'm like just history. saying. I'm just saying. Interesting. So, after the rest dolls died, another family took over, um, or another person took over, Robert Dunfield, who continued digging throughout the 1960s. And after excavating several promising locations, and that's the thing is that he, they were they were drilling shafts in different areas of the island too. It wasn't like it was all at the money pit, you know. So like there could be some sort of natural Here I have stuff. gas bubble. Oh, okay, so nice. in August of 1965, they did autopsies, and the coroner, sorry, the coroner's <laughs> report determined that all four had died by drowning at the bottom of the 27 foot shaft. Oh, it, and at the bottom is 27 feet? Oh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it could have caved in. Um, and it was suggested that it was carbon monoxide poisoning from fumes emanating from the gasoline-powered pump that was running at the surface. That makes sense. Uh, so it couldn't, it may not have been from the pit. Ah, well, that makes a lot more sense. It made them lose consciousness and right. fall off the ladder. They're probably the like bottom. set They were up, climbing up the ladder. So they're inhaling too much carbon monoxide and then they fell in. It was probably building up whatever they were using had like maybe yeah. it was getting in there and then damn because these are like these are like shafts these are like really deep shafts i'll throw some pictures but they're very very deep like if you think of like a cave going down into a cave like a deep cave this is just like a hole in the ground yeah and so you know it'd be very it hard to still think curse because that's kind of a weird freak thing to happen right isn't it yeah that's what and it kind of it feeds into the legend of, you know, some people got to die in order for the treasure to be found. Yeah, it does. Wow, so, interesting. All right, I'm in this. What's next? All right, so Dunfield, who took out over after the rest halls, he continued digging throughout the 60s, but he never found anything. And the only thing he was able to find were shards of porcelain and just core samples that he took. Hmm. But in 1969, the expedition... God, sorry. In 1969, <laughs> the expedition began... In earnest when Blankenship 
and Tobias formed the Triton Alliance Limited. This new company wasted no time in their efforts to retrieve the mysterious fortune. Now, I was going to say, why doesn't like Elon Musk or someone fund this with like unlimited resources and just like blow the thing up? <laughs> I don't why don't get we just it. like lift the island up? Like, why is it can't just, we just like, like some pick dudes? up the island? <laughs> That's the thing about it, and I'll explain why later. But okay. um, in that year of 1969, a mm -hmm. test pit 180 feet northeast of the tunnel of the main tunnel, um, the Triton crew actually noted finding a small amount of metal at a depth of 160 feet. Additionally, metal samples were also found in 1970 at various depths northeast of the money pit. But 1970, during an excavation attempt in Smith Cove, workers uncovered U-shaped formation of logs marked with Roman numerals. The construction was thought to be the remnants of an ancient dam or harbor. So this is interesting. They believe that there is under, like underneath the money pit, that there may be tunnels that have been made. That tunnel all the way back to the ocean, which I think is like 500 feet, and goes under the ocean. That is like a subterranean tunnel. So it goes underneath island but opens into the ocean and they sort of they found these logs that were marked with Roman Roman numerals apparently that may have been like a dam so like there had been like a dam at the sea that may have been connected back to the pit to keep the water out of it yeah to like control water going in water, water going, going out Wow! like they built a dam so there's like some type of use how are possibly they doing this, this so long ago and like we can't even like undo it now well because i mean it would have had to be before the 1700s that this happened right oh absolutely wow this is, they actually found a pair of wrought iron scissors wooden sled and a portion of an iron ruler and other iron artifacts including nails and spikes have they been able to like yeah they tested them and the them? materials were determined to predate 1790 ah uh, yeah so this is quite a quite a long time ago 1700s we're talking yeah isn't that when the guy or even before it, 1600s yeah well that's the thing it was it was discovered in 1795 but and it it's looked been like there. it was barely it was just buried right it looked like it had been there probably for a while i think i yeah, think the idea was years, it was didn't look like, like it wasn't like a fresh dig site no it wasn't okay. like there was like shovels in there and like a pound but it wasn't of dirt. like so old that it like no completely right covered well that's the thing either. yeah it wasn't so like it wasn't... hundreds of years so it was somewhere in the 1700s Right? Yes. <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. So the at this point in time, the Triton Alliance, who's excavating the money pit, had their first evidence of human activity prior to the very first excavation. Wow. And the developments in 1971 only furthered the team's convictions in chasing the alleged riches. In January of that year, one of the most promising boreholes, termed 10X, was widened to fit a 27-inch diameter casing and deepened to 165 feet. During the process, the crew recovered fragments of broken concrete as well as pieces of metal chain and wire from the flooded tunnel. Several months later, after the men had satisfactorily prepared the site, the team lowered a video camera into the watery shaft. The, the lens relayed grainy yet dramatic images back to observers at the surface. According to authors Graham Harris and Les McAfee, borehole 10X terminated in a cavity carved out of bedrock within the stone chamber were what appeared to be a severed hand a corpse and several treasure chests prompted by the video images the triton alliance initiated approximately 10 diving excursions into the subterranean cavern no treasure was extracted as a result of the divers investigations so they literally saw it all so they literally saw it but they couldn't get to it and there's literally a guy down there with it oh that's so creepy it's yeah. like a real pirate story. Man, they could use those cave divers from the Thailand rescue to So we don't know that to this get is it. pirates though. Well, like. that's the thing is like I can't find any evidence of the images that they took, these grainy images and for all we know they yeah. they said grainy, so chances are yeah. grainy means like this could be a treasure chest, this could be a you a know dog. somebody's shell or something, you know, like they don't know. Mm. But because they were in, involved with tons of legal battles, it became a very contested area as far as the money goes. And just the stock market was a mess in 1987 that they completely stopped excavating the money pit. The wow. Triton Alliance did. Damn. So now we're getting into the late 80s, into 90s modern day. And legal issues 
again continued to undermine Oak Island stakeholders through 1989 and since 1954, the Treasure Trove Act served as the standard for regulating treasure hunting activities. Under the provisions of the initial Treasure Trove Act, hopeful individuals were granted a treasure trove license. The terms of the license guaranteed 10% of any recovered wealth went to the prov uh, provincial government. Then in 1989, the legislation revised the original act, tightening regulations and limiting license issuance. So that's the thing is they made it a government entity and that you need a license for it yeah. in order to excavate it. Plus you got to pay us 10% of whatever yeah. you find. Damn, which could be a lot. So it was. It became very expensive to basically excavate Oak Island's money pit. And so Oak Island then turned to tourism as both a source of revenue and public promotion. Unfortunately, though, this type of commercial activity also required a license. And despite the additional limitations governing treasure hunting, the main players on Oak Island, including the Triton Alliance, all managed to secure their own Trevor Trove's licenses. And they basically... Um, also began doing tourism in the late 1980s. But then they basically then went on to form what's called the Oak Island Tourism Society. But unfortunately for Oak Island enthusiasts, several developments around the turn of the 21st century created further complications. In 2009, the Oak Island Treasure or Tourism Society voted to dissolve the organization, citing their inability to open an interpretive center dedicated to the Money Pit narrative. Then in 2010, the Canadian government revisited the Treasure Trove Act. This time, rather than tightening restrictions and legislation, officials replaced the bill with the Oak Island Treasure Act. The new law aimed to discourage exploiting Nova Scotia's cultural resources for commercial gain. Interesting. As a result, anyone who wants to search for and recover in Oak Island, Nova Scotia, whether it's precious stones or metals in the state other than their natural state, and in order to keep them would face a cumbersome licensing process with the Department of Natural Resources, and they'd be heavily taxed on any of its findings. Mm. So this is basically just to discourage people from seeking treasure there until this TV show on the History Channel called The Curse of Oak Island. So this is the most recent attempt to yeah. retrieve the treasure. I think there's four seasons of it you can actually watch. I want to watch it now. Yeah, so it's a... It's brothers Rick and Marty uh, Legina and their team. And their treasure hunting has been uh, made into the show. And some of the finds made by the brothers in the money pit include pieces of metal and wood. But one of the most intriguing discoveries was made at the end of the program's fourth season, which concluded at the end of February 2017, during which a large piece of worked metal that might have been part of a treasure chest was found. Although most treasure hunters have ended up empty handed, Another recent revelation found off the coast of Oak Island points to an incredible and possibly history changing finding. This is actually history changing. A shipwreck believed to be Roman was discovered near Oak Island oh. and within the wreck, it has been claimed that a well-preserved Roman ceremonial sword was retrieved. And they had like Roman numerals in some of the things that they, they said found. on the dam too. Yeah. Wow. So there's multiple signs that the Romans may have found Nova Scotia way back. Wow. I wouldn't be shocked. I feel like our version of like who everyone who discovered things is like, it's like, what are you talking about? Dude, I'm telling you that <laughs> history just keeps getting older and older and older. Yeah, because it's history. No, but <laughs> no, but I'm just saying like, as far as like, the story, like the humans and like how far back it goes. Oh, yeah. yeah. We keep seeing it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But a researcher by the name uh, Jay Hutton Pulitzer actually wrote a paper in 2016 on the find of this sword and also outlined other possible evidence that Romans may have reached the New World more than 1,000 years before Christopher Columbus, guys. Mm. So obviously this is debated because it goes against, you know, what we know as history now. But it seems that there's more and more evidence being gathered that the Romans may have literally just like sailed all over the world and discovered essentially the Americas before Christopher Columbus because of this artifact and other artifacts they found. Well, that certainly changes things. Because, I mean, it looks old. That looks like mm -hmm. a Roman sword. That's cool as hell. That's so cool. That looks, yeah, that looks Imagine how cool it would be to find something like that. Seriously. <laughs> Why can't I find any treasure? Well, you're not looking for it. I know, but 
Better get to digging in our backyard. I'm always kind of jealous of the people at the beach with the metal detectors. I'm like, I wonder if you ever find anything cool. I bet I you think do. People do. I bet you find jewelry all the time. Like, oh yeah, like how ring. you lost your <laughs> wedding ring at the beach, hey, ladies and gentlemen. Don't roast me on that. I did. I was so. I pissed. did. I was playing but you catch, now. and whoop, the sea devoured it. Yeah, it did. Our love is at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, you've tried to use that line on me <laughs> so, like 10 times. That's not going to work. I'm still mad at you for losing your wedding ring. <laughs> Damn. I got a new one, though. Yes, you did. I'm going to get a new one every year. Uh-uh. That's your last one, dude. If you lose that, we're divorced. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. All right, guys. If I lose this ring, no more podcast. I won't lose it. <laughs> okay. All right, so... Notable treasure seekers on Oak Island. Two actors, Earl Flynn and John Wayne, both sought the buried treasure in the 1940s. But Flynn really never got an opportunity to actually pursue the prize because Wayne held the rights to seek the treasure on the island at that time. Jeez. So this is perhaps the most interesting thing to debate about is the theories behind Oak Island and the money pit. What is going on here? Really, what's going on? Yeah. So one theory that is pretty popular is that this money pit and Oak Island maybe in itself is just sort of a natural phenomenon. So under this theory, critics, what? listen, what? under this theory, critics maintain that Oak Island is obviously fewer than 500 yards from the mainland of Nova Scotia. But due to its proximity, it is assumed that the two land masses share in certain geological characteristics. Individuals who subscribe to this school of thought point to the multitude of sinkholes, which litter Nova Scotia's subsurface. So, to people, maybe the money pit is just little more than a profound sinkhole worn through a susceptible limestone substrate. Well, why are there all these layers of things that were clearly not naturally put there? So maybe if anything, it was a sinkhole at one point and someone used it to bury their treasure knowing that like this will refill and it'll be hard to get it. Yeah. Like, I mean, obviously there were sinkholes back then too. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And this, and this is interesting too, that um, according to critics of this treasure island hypothesis, all the artifacts recovered from the pit can be credited to debris washing into a naturally occurring subterranean cavity. So they're basically saying that the treasure that's in the money pit is just like shipwrecked treasure that's been pushed through the subterranean tunnel into this pit, this money pit that exists now. To me, it doesn't that doesn't explain the layers of oak logs there that it looks like somebody layered this dig site like yeah. this hole, this pit. Yeah. They layered that's what it. I just said, yeah, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> HM. It's OK. All right, pirate treasure. This is perhaps one of the most common theories is that at the bottom of the money pit on Oak Island, Captain Kidd buried his vast treasure there just before his capture in Boston in 1699. They also believe that Kidd might have conspired with Henry Every to use Oak Island as a type of community bank between the two. So that's the thing. A lot of people think there's pirate treasure in the pit. And some even believe that notorious pirate Blackbeard himself buried his treasure there due to him boasting that his treasure was hidden where none but Satan and myself can find it. <laughs> so wow. Blackbeard's treasure could be there. Have you heard Ooh. of Blackbeard? I love Blackbeard. Not he's a, really. He's a badass. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Were you ever into pirates at all? Like did you did no, you like Peter but Pan? My sister's and stuff? boyfriend told me that pirates like weren't around that long. That like way less than we were told. Yeah, it was a very short window of time short. that they were actually running around like they were. Like yeah. we believe they were, you know, like in their ships and taking yeah. over and pillaging and, you know. Yeah. They were wiped out by something. But though. you never got into like Pirates of the Caribbean or I've never even seen those movies. I honestly just like Oh, don't maybe care we'll for watch it. that Pirates Treasure. Uh, I'm so, good. I'm good. I watched that once <laughs> at our neighborhood Flick and Floats. Flick we had a uh, <laughs> night in our neighborhood pool where they'd like Everyone bring their floaty down Looking and they put it on like a they'd like project something onto the wall of the pool house. And it was always it was always Pirates of the Caribbean and I always hated it. Sorry, I know most people like that, so it's probably a very You're really opinion. you're really hurting me right now. I'm feeling Oh upset. my god, Josh, I've never even heard you talk about it or, or No, watch it I mean I I liked <laughs> the the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, but mostly cuz like Orlando Bloom was in in them oh, and yeah. Johnny Depp's in them, so mm -hmm. that was ah. good. 
but otherwise I've never really been a big like I read Treasure Island and things like that um so I definitely understand the pirate life I think <laughs> okay <laughs> oh all right this is funny guys okay remember at one of my first real corporate jobs there was a guy that I worked with that literally lived the pirate life oh my god yes like through and through this guy he was, was a pretty pirate. badass he was he was super he badass. really was like josh told me about it at home he's like this guy like really likes pirates and then i went to their christmas party yeah and i saw and i was like oh you weren't lying like, like this guy like pirate. dresses like pirate every day yeah he commits he's like <laughs> cosplay times you know a million yeah, but just like doing it all the time but then he'd like show me pictures of his house and stuff and it'd be like you know, like that show in, in Amazing Interiors. He had like a whole like pirate room. He had like treasure even. Ooh, yeah, he, he, he loves Oak Island. Yeah. And like he'd have his like little pirate hat on at work sometimes. And we'd all be sitting there and like, what's up with the pirate hat? That's kind of like, cool though. Like you got to give it to it. him. He was you know? rocking it, man. I'm hey, like, I wish I was like that badass to like just do it. You know, I think that's so cool. When people but some just people just live their like interests and passions. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, Go for it. That makes you happy, man. Yeah. All, all the power to you. Hey, it <laughs> made real? going to work every day super interesting. <laughs> yeah, I bet. What's the pirate going to work Jason. Today? I think his name was Jason. Jason the pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, not like anybody would know Jason. Like, whatever. Could be Gerald for all we know. I don't think his name was Jason. His name was not Jason. What was it? I don't know, but I don't remember Black it being that. I don't know. It doesn't <laughs> matter. Anyway. <laughs> all right, so... There's a lot of like we think Blackbeard's treasure could be there. We think that um, Captain Kidd's treasure could be there, but others have claimed that British Marines actually dug the pit to store loot acquired from the British invasion of Cuba, which was valued at about 180 million dollars in 2015. One million pounds, or yeah, one million pounds. And an author, John Godwin, wrote that the, given the apparent size and complexity of the pit, it was probably dug by French army engineers hoping to hide the treasury of the fortress of Louisbourg after it fell to the British during the Seven Years' War. This is actually interesting and, and could definitely be um, the case here. Because I, I, have, I have heard definitely people that have looked at, you know, the pit and what it looked like originally and things like that, mm -hmm. that this thing had to have been constructed by engineers especially when they discovered the dam and this tunnel and things like that it would require engineering expertise which a lot of attribute you know and at that time period a lot of those people were military a lot of the most smartest you know engineer type people were in the military so they mm -hmm. think that this could be what's buried there mm. they also believe that uh, marie antoinette's who was the last queen of france before the french revolution her jewels went missing except for specimens in museum collection, but they've been reportedly hidden on the island. Mm. Apparently on October 5th, 1789, an angry mob of Parisian working women was incited by revolutionaries and marched on the Palace of Versailles. According to the undocumented story, Marie Antoinette instructed her maid to take the jewels and flee. The maid fled to London with the jewels and perhaps other treasures such as artwork or documents uh, with her in her luggage and the woman went from London to Nova Scotia Using royal connections. She contracted with the French Navy to construct the Oak Island pit is the theory hmm. which seems possible yeah, But again, I, I I don't know I just I'm like trying to think of if I was Marie Antoinette and be like go to Nova Scotia and dig a huge pit and throw my shit in there like, what's this idea of, like, burying it? I don't know? really understand like, why back then it was, like, such a big deal to, like, bury your money right. for no one to find out. Yeah, well, dead. that was a thing, yeah. A lot of people did that. Uh, yeah, it was, like, the thing to do back like then. Like, go in your seems. backyard and, like, bury something, and you're like, nobody like, will find no it. Like, no one buries stuff. I mean, I guess maybe some people do. <laughs> well, we bury people, <laughs> Like, so. what if we went out to our yard and, like, just buried all our nicest stuff? Like, we don't want anyone to have this but us, even if we're dead. Well, nowadays, like... I feel Unless like if you were a ghost, if Marie Antoinette did hide her stuff and she's a ghost, she's probably regretting hiding it so well because she'd be like, it'd probably be pretty interesting if they found it and then they'd know some stuff about me. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want people to see to what see these, you had? Like, why like, hide it from everybody? I guess she 
if she was instruct, instructed to flee, like maybe they, she just didn't want any enemies to get. Yeah, in. well, that's the thing. That like, makes I, sense. I don't think she wanted it's to. Really, from enemies, not have from her, future people. Yeah, yeah. Weird. They're not thinking future when. But they no do one's it. doing that now. But I guess you have a bank or a vault, like you can like buy somewhere where you know. Well, now people no do like safety something. deposit boxes. Yeah, and things like that. You know. Yeah, back then it was like go. <laughs> or a vault, you know, build a vault in your house. God, and it's like your... a dog going out and burying your stuff. Mm -hmm. it's so weird. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Um, other people have speculated that it's actually a naval treasure buried there. Ooh, a naval treasure. Basically, this theory hinges on British aggression against French holdings at Fort Louisburg. Here, it is thought that at some point during the French and Indian War and the subsequent Seven Years War, the Franco treasure held at the fortification was transferred to a sophisticated vault on Oak Island. Now, there are two opposing viewpoints to this line of reasoning. Some believe that at some point during the six-week siege of 1758, the French slipped transportation of their riches past the invading British vessels, just depositing the Fort Louisburg coffers in the aptly named money pit. Others deem that the successful 1758 British attack on the fort ultimately led to the construction of the money pit for safekeeping. However, under this hypothesis, British forces were ordered to systematically dismember the fallen French stronghold, pillaging its riches before depositing them beneath the island off the coast of Nova Scotia. Honestly, I'll, I, honestly, I'm starting to lean more towards there could be some type of treasure there. Maybe it's already been gone. Like maybe it got taken like right after and we're seeing the remnants of the money pit. Like maybe they really did construct this like type of pit that has this tunnel and has a dam that, you know, controls water going in and out of it. You know, maybe they did it as a decoy, but maybe they really did use it as a place to store stuff, kind of like a natural vault. If you think about yeah, it, like a natural sense. vault, yeah. put the goods there and then mm -hmm. they were just taken like right after. Like how do you get before. them back out if you need it? Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe you like just flush Why it out. Why would you leave it for like your grandkids or like the next, your kids? In a useful way. I don't know, just burying it seems so weird. All right, this is probably one of the most interesting uh, theories around the Oak Island money pit, and that is we may possibly understand the true identity, identity of William Shakespeare, which this is kind of the Shakespeare conspiracy, if you haven't heard it. So in June of 1897, the Truro Company managed to recover a mysterious shroud of parchment from the depths of the main tunnel, and written on the face of the fragment was what appeared to be the letters VI, uppercase. And although the text adds an interesting dimension to the intriguing money pit saga, it does not bring the hordes of explorers any closer to wealth or prestige. So why then do so many people feel that two letters on parchment are more significant than even gold coins? Well, according to one theory, the answer can be found in a 16th century English playhouse. William Shakespeare, who was born in 1564 in Stratford, Avon in the English countryside. And although his early schooling remains debated, records indicate that Shakespeare never attended college. Instead, as a young man, he joined an acting troupe and pursued theater as a profession. Through his remarkable ability as a playwright and unique talent to captivate his audiences, Shakespeare eventually earned a reputation as a literary genius. His canon of work includes 37 plays attributed to the distinguished author. However, some critics believe that the unparalleled literature of William Shakespeare is part of a real life narrative far more cunning. Mm -hmm. To some, Shakespeare's brilliance was not in his writing, but in his ability to deceive. Citing his lack of education, travel, or general yeah. experience in the world, there's a lot of critics theories about him. Believe that Shakespeare never authored any yeah. of the famous Shakespeare plays. Instead, they offer that he merely claimed the works as his own From to Sir. conceal the identity of Sir Fran Francis Bacon. Sir talked, fucking talked Francis this. this is Bacon. such an interesting theory. I want to do a whole podcast on this. Oh, it's it's weird. It's really wild. So this theory falls Bacon, who's a recognized scientist, scholar, philosopher, statesman, and contemporary of Shakespeare, who was, who was responsible for penning the literature. And to avoid being labeled a lowly playwright, the aristocratic Bacon secretly transferred credit to Shakespeare. According to some, Bacon embedded clues in many of the plays suggesting this arrangement. Interesting. When the parchment containing India ink lettering was retrieved from the money pit, 
a group of onlookers were convinced of its connection to this Shakespearean conspiracy. To them, <laughs> the parchment represented a fragment of the documents contained in the pit that would finally prove Bacon's authorship. Bolstering this opinion is wow. Sir Francis Bacon's book, Silva Silverum, in which he details his design of a perpetual spring. The self-flooding tunnel described in the text has many theorists convinced that wow. in the depths of the Oak Island money pit lies proof of Sir Francis Bacon's true literary Why would he not just want to go down for it himself? He thought like he could get his work out more if Shakespeare did it? I don't know. This one's That one's pretty far-fetched to me, if you ask me. I mean, There's why? a lot to that theory, actually, Josh. We should do a podcast on it. No, I know. Because I've like, that done was a ton of research angle. on that. It's very, very compelling. I have heard some of it, yeah. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be either. Hmm. Another theory holds that the money pit is an ancient Christian site. Hmm. Not everyone is convinced of the decryption of the inscribed stone that was found. Another group holds that the symbols written on the tablet date to a much earlier time. Some believe that the actual meaning of the symbols found on the rock face is as follows. The people shall not forget the Lord to offset the hardships of winter <laughs> and the onset of, of plague. The Arif, he shall pray to the Lord. A How would they have known yeah. that, though? Well, that's the thing is like, when, like you, whenever you're talking about like decrypting or deciphering, yeah, they're that individual's interpretation. Yeah. At the end of the day, yes. like they may be using some sort of method or process, but at the end of the day, this is their translation. So a Harvard zoology professor and the founder of Epigraphic Society of America named Dr. Barry Fell was responsible for this translation. Fell was born in 1917 and studied ancient and foreign languages alongside his formal training as a zoologist. Through his work, Fell determined that seemingly disparate cultures previously thought to have no contact with one another actually shared a number of similarities between their languages and symbols. Interesting. Ultimately, Dr. Fell formulated a controversial hypothesis that claims that the ancient civilizations of Africa, Asia, and Europe had regular contact with the Americas long before Columbus made his famed discovery. Boom, that is a bomb, if you think about that. Mm -hmm. That is. What if that is the case? Wow. What if these ancient civilizations that we call ancient were advanced civilizations yeah. that lived on the planet like we do now? They yeah. had contact with everybody across the world. They knew, you know, they knew what the planet looked like. They Wouldn't knew we have more evidence of that though. It's hard. It's hard. Because at the same time they were doing not things. necessarily if a major Cataclysmic event happened that could all be destroyed or it could all be on the bottom of the ocean could all be buried underground beneath our feet right now mm. 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 It's possible. I'm saying it's possible. I'm yeah, not saying it's that it's true. I'm saying it's possible I just feel like we would find something you would think you would you would think that if that was the case that like we would be digging constantly digging up artifacts yeah. all the time exactly Maybe we are mm. <laughs> And they're just not telling us so that's so basically uh, this guy fell and his followers say the uh, the money pit stone tablet had been created by the Coptic Christians a Group of Christians rooted in Egypt The zealous Egyptian worshipers have been credited by some as the descendants of Pharaohs and the builders of the Great Pyramids According to fell the mystical stone found on Oak Island was left by an early Coptic settlement as a warning to prevent divine wrath by adhering to strict religious practices whether the work of a pirate's hand or proof that North African Christians were active in the pre-Columbian New World remains debated. Interesting. So th that that basically says is we don't, you know, unfortunately we don't know exactly what that stone means or what the symbols mean. We may never know. Now this is perhaps one of my favorites about about this Oak Island mystery, and that is that somehow the Knights Templar and Freemasonry are involved with the money pit. Because here's one thing. That I don't think I, I put in here, but there is stones, these large stones, they're rounded, they're, they, they look very odd. But a guy that lives on the island actually figured out that they make a cross across the entire island. Whoa. There's literally a, these stones, they're very large, and he measured them out, and they're exactly the same, uh, the same width across. Like a across. Christian cross? Yes. Interesting. Like a Christian cross, because that goes with the Knights Templar. Mm, oh, okay. So that's how this kind of gets tied in. So obviously, there 
People believe that the inscribed stone, together with grouping of other stones on the island that I just mentioned, indicate that people actually, or indicate the actual people who were responsible for engineering the money pit. So the same people that built this cross with these huge stones across the island also may have engineered the money pit. Interesting. So, as this story goes around 11, 14 AD, I was stumbling on how to even pronounce something that old. A small collection of devout Christians formed a group determined to safeguard Pilgrim's passage to the Holy Land. With their devotion to protect the sacred temple of Solomon, the group was termed the Knights Templar. The church-affiliated Catholic Encyclopedia provides that in 1118, during the reign of Baldwin II, a knight of Champagne and eight companions bound themselves by a perpetual vow taken in the presence of the Patriarch of Jerusalem to defend the Christian kingdom. Hmm. The original nine men of Knights Templar who swore to protect their faith eventually influenced a legend that would persist through the centuries. Through their efforts to secure Jerusalem for the Christian faithful, the Knights Templar garnered a reputation as a uh, pious and capable military force. More importantly, some believe that during their time in Jerusalem, the small band of monistic warriors uncovered the legendary Holy, Holy Grail. Grail. Obviously, this can't be verified. The Knights Templar did acquire an elevated status following their victorious crusades. At their height, the Knights Templar represented nothing short of an elite um, section or an elite group with the wealthy houses of Europe clamoring to enlist their sons and donate their riches. So this was like the group. This was like Navy SEALs yeah. times 10. Except there's like six of them. Nine of them, yeah. Nine of them. That seems like not very many. That's a pretty big job for nine people to do. It is. It is a big job. Big responsibility. Yeah. But following nearly two centuries of patronage to the church on Friday the 13th, 1307, King Felipe the Fourth of France and Pope Clement V resolved to abolish the Order of the Knights Templar in France and arrested hundreds of its members. Of course, this was the Catholic Church, I believe, taking down the Knights Templar. The Crusades, have you ever looked into the Crusades? That's a very crazy time in history yeah it is it's wild man what it happened is. during the crusades but anyways the action was taken as a measure to seize the vast wealth the nice templar were known to have acquired because we think they may have acquired the holy grail which is the yeah. holy fucking grail guys this is like what is everybody it? wants no to find the grail it oh it's like cup i believe like the holy grail cup you know? oh it's a cup i believe so i don't even know anything i just have like heard beauty girls called their favorite <laughs> shit holy grails well, that's why Holy Grail has always been associated with like something that is like so precious, you know, like a treasure that can never be taken away. Hmm. The Holy Grail. I'm looking it up. All right. So the action was taken as a measure to oh, seize the vast wealth. Cup. Yeah. Yeah. It's wow. the Holy Grail cup. Yeah. It's just like a fancy cup. It's not that though. We don't know what it looks like exactly. But, yeah. These are like what people get. Yeah. Like, I right. see. Or in that movie. Fuck, what's it called? Oh my god, I can't believe I'm spacing the name of the movie. I have no idea. National Something Treasure? Holy Grail. No, no, it's the Holy Grail movie. Ah, oh, it's so funny. Oh, Monty Python. Yeah, Monty Python, the Holy Grail. Yes. I've Jesus. never even seen that. I just have heard people say You've that. You've never seen that? Oh my god, that's a classic. No. Gotta see that. Okay. But anyways, the king and the pope at the time were trying to seize the wealth of the Knights Templar. Many were tortured and executed for hearsay or forced to formally relinquish their loyalty to the order. Despite the threat of death or punishment, the aff affiliation thrived in the shadow of royal authority. Some people hold on that on the fateful Friday in 1307, while religious warriors were being incarcerated and ultimately burned at the cross, the mysterious wealth held by the Knights of France were simultaneously being loaded aboard a seafaring ship. The destination of the vessel is yet to be known, one belief is that the knights traveled to Scotland where efforts to relinquish the order were not pursued. To evade further persecution and perhaps protect the Holy Grail, the knights formed a secret society. Similar to their previous affiliation, the new faction was imbued with religious rites and symbolism. And although active for centuries, this group did not officially make their presence known to the public until the early 18th century. According to their official history, the first Grand Lodge of Free and Accepted Masons was established in 1717 in London. Hmm. It is believed that the Freemasons are the reincarnation of the fabled Knights Templar. Interesting. Why? 
So what happened to the Templar's treasure? If this is in fact true. Again, we again this is specu mm -hmm. that we're speculating right now, okay? We're speculating about we don't know what's actually true. Yeah. But according to a handful of scholars, explorers, and investors, the ultimate destination for the Holy Grail and other priceless objects belonging to the Knights Templar was the famed money pit on Nova Scotia's Oak Island. Which wow. which would mean like this was around a long, long time ago. Maybe it's always yeah. been there. Maybe this has just always been on the island for some reason. Yeah. We don't know how far back. Supporting this theory is the discovery of several several peculiar stones found across the island, which I had mentioned. There's numerous crosses, a circle with one central dot, deliberate triangular rock formations, and the letter H thought to be an alteration representing the Hebrew term Jehovah. Hmm. And each of these symbols is deeply rooted in uh, Masonic traditions, combining the meaning of the stones with the engineer's sophistication in the tunnel. Many investigators are convinced that the money pit is not simply the treasure chest of a pirate. Instead, they believe it may be the site for the Holy Grail or the Ark <laughs> of the Covenant. Ooh. Which would be crazy. And why? Why there? Out of everywhere in the world, why there? Interesting. But it's possible. Yeah. It's possible. We have no idea what it is. There's Ugh. hidden treasures everywhere that we don't know where they are. There's a hidden treasure in the motherfucking Sphinx that we can't get to. Yeah. That could be like groundbreaking. How do we not I feel like we should just What do are it? we gonna do? Like blow it up? Like what how are you supposed to get inside the Sphinx without destroying it? Destroy it? Rebuild it? I don't know, man. Make a cl clone copy of it? That's the only way to get in. Like how long are we gonna wait? What if it's like the secret to life? That's the Remember debate. Remember that boy from Mars <laughs> that claimed yeah. he was from Mars? It's yeah. like a reincarnation story. It's this boy from Russia who claimed he was like an alien on Mars in his past life. And he said that there's like some big secret that would like explain everything. Inside there probably is. There probably is. There's probably something, at least a clue, a good clue. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. So, yeah, the money pit. <laughs> Fascinating. Two centuries of different people and companies attempting to drill in order to find the treasure. We still have no idea what's in it, but it continues to intrigue people. Obviously, the people on the History Channel were just digging in it last year. So who knows? Maybe and they never got close. They never got anything. The problem is, is the water thing. The water has been the repeated issue. How do we keep the water? They can't keep the water from filling up the pit. Wow. Why don't they just like install like a vacuum system that pumps it out to the ocean? Be you know what kind of like time and resources? I believe they've even tried that too. There's got to be some they're really able to rich get it out, but in the they're... world who could fund that. Well, let's start a petition for Elon Musk <laughs> and the Boring Company to go and recover the treasure at Oak Island. Somebody get on that. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, if these are just two brothers. You know, they've got to show they don't have unlimited resources. They can only dig so deep. Yeah. You know, like you only have so much funds and resources like to do this. So unless you get like a giant corporation like, you know, Tesla or You would need like better proof that there's actually something down there. We need the ability. Why isn't there the technology to scan underground yet? I don't know. Why can't we like use a device that can just like x-ray through the ground and see what's all underneath us? It's probably really hard to do. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what technology you'd use for that. Yeah. That sounds but like that, very that's difficult. what we need. Imagine all the cool shit we'd find and oh, so scary much. shit we'd find too. So much <laughs> under there. So that is the mystery and the legend of Oak Island and the money pit. I think that again, there may be something there. I've, I'm under the impression of this has to do with the military. I think there's something military because my whole thing oh. goes back to the construction of, of the actual money pit itself to the dam that was discovered i think the the military may be involved with it but then the roman stuff just throws me you know throws me back yeah, off the cliff and i'm lost again wow so i don't know i don't know i'm gonna just say i don't know yeah i hope somebody I finds something either. maybe we'll never find anything maybe there's nothing there maybe it's on the other side of the island inside if of a only cave we or something actually could decipher for sure what that stone says that would help us that would help a lot <laughs> if we could decide at least figure out where it originated from what it means exactly yeah yeah we don't know that looks the thing. like straight alien like 
characters. It's so weird. I thought the first translation it's a kind of futuristic like looking in a yeah, way for yeah. the for the time. Here, let's throw a new theory out there. Okay. It was the aliens. Could have been. They landed there. Yeah. They buried there. Maybe like the secrets to everything is down there, and it's like here you go. Once you find this, then you can finally become a type one civilization. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I don't figure know. like if they can figure out a way to dig this hole and like get everything out, then they're advanced enough to know the truth. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's like a maybe it's like a challenge. Maybe a it's trap. like a, a yeah, maybe it's like a trap we have to get through. Well, clearly someone did it, and I feel like would they go to all that work for a decoy? I don't know. I that seems unlikely. That seems, That's yeah. so deep too. I'm pretty sure there's something down there. But what if it's just like. A a low life pirate, like someone who just like he's like <laughs> I tried my best, I got a little gold in my Average life. Average Joe. Yeah, like he's got like maybe thirty two grand or something saved up, <laughs> and he he buried it in the ground, and he went to all that extent to do it. Maybe he was just like really good at digging or really good at, I don't know. Maybe it was for fun. Maybe know. they were so bored. They probably were bored. That they're like, look, all right, we're gonna fuck with people two hundred years from now. They're gonna think there's treasure in here, right? No treasure. <laughs> Well, that's what you got to think about is it's very interesting to think why they did this because I really don't think they were thinking I don't want people way down in the future to find this because why wouldn't they want to have a legacy or Why know. would you if you had something like the Holy Grail you your whole life Ark of the Covenant? It. Why would you want to like hide that from everybody from like the future? It's very curious I wonder if in our lifetime they'll figure it out and they'll they'll get into that hole because I bet eventually someone they just need better proof. They need someone to stick a camera down there again like they did the first round with the the one company that was doing it. And they said that they saw grainy images of the, the gold. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, so if they had better images. Dive into it. Maybe yeah. they can dive through the like outside tunnel oh, or something. Do you want to sign up for that? No. No. I don't, don't want to join the other people that died in there. But if they got a camera down there a better camera it's been a while when yeah. did they do that well like, now they have those like little like robotic submarines like why don't you like yeah drive one no, of those they in send there. cameras down to the bottom of the ocean you can get clear video of like alien looking creatures down there yeah. so yeah. why couldn't we send something down there that could see it like especially if Again. they've already seen it once because if you got enough proof that there's something there and it's something really good then someone could well back that's it the problem that's the problem with this is that there's not a lot of proof. Exactly. There's not. And that's the Someone thing. Someone could say, like, I don't want to do it because right. what there's if there's no nothing proof. there? This could be a complete, complete waste, waste of time. Waste of my time and, and money. So that's where it's at. It's kind of like most, I think a lot of people think there's nothing there. So they just kind of look at it there's as like, gotta ooh, be something it's a legend. There, it just might not be something good. That's what I'm saying. I think it's pretty fucking obvious there's something there. No one goes to the extent to bury and do layers of logs and layers of metal. And what else do they find? Coconuts? Like, that wasn't just natural. That coconut fibers. Coconut but... <laughs> fibers down there. Come on. No, I know. There's, so, there there's was something, something under there. But it may just be, like, something pretty people average. People like, f tons and tons of people. It's been excavated for 200 years and nobody's found nothing. I, I think so. I think as soon as that technology comes that you can scan underground. Yeah. People treasure hunting is going to be the new thing to do on your weekend, man. <laughs> Everybody's going to be treasure hunting. I'm going to be out treasure uh. hunting. <laughs> All the treasures out there. That'd go be like the next vlog series we could do, like going out to find a treasure. That'd that be would fun. be cool. Three part series, you know. <laughs> Three part series. Hell What's yeah. What's shame? But um. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. God, just by the way, though, his Jeffree Star series is really good. It's not even over yet. There's two more episodes coming this week. Yes. Very good. He's just, he blows my mind with He's his a legend. creativity. Speaking of legends. Anyways, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up here today. <laughs> yes. We had a lot of fun talking about this that stuff. That was interesting as hell. I went from so, knowing pretty much nothing about Oak Island to learning a lot. Yeah, hopefully you understand what Oak Island is, what the money pit is. You can actually go to it if you want, but uh, you may not find nothing, but it is interesting. The rocks and the <laughs> we'll formations are interesting, too. I think there's definitely something mysterious to the island. I think there's definitely some history to it that we probably don't fully understand or know. And the whole idea that, like, the biggest thing I'm taking away from today is, like, the whole idea that civilizations were there before Christopher Columbus like our history books tell us yeah. Christopher Columbus Christopher discovered. Columbus is the biggest yeah, joke you know, to ever but... grace American history let me tell you he did not find anything Leif Erikson found it way before Christopher Columbus even did so it's a giant fucking lie plus he never even made it to America did you know that he never even made it to Florida dude he made it to the Bahamas that's it 
the dude the fact never that he's credited with it is just yeah. like pathetic <laughs> yeah pathetic. he was he was like a fucking savage he like killed so no i know many, he was a, yeah. slaughtered millions literally millions horrible human being yeah terrible dude anyway but let's anyway, end on that note but anyway thank you guys for joining us for episode 29 we really want to know your guys' thoughts like what are your theories is there any other theories that you find you found that were interesting that you want to share with us we want to hear what you guys think do you think nothing's even down there god what a waste yeah what if no. there's literally nothing there and we're making a podcast about literally nothing it literally could be nothing it could be <laughs> there could be a sign at the bottom that says gotcha suck us <laughs> It's like a symbol for yeah. suckers. <laughs> yeah, it's literally like a Ooh, like a smiley dig, face. Bro. Maybe you seriously, some muscle. <laughs> but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, let us know what your guys' thoughts on it. Like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. Let us know if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening, go watch it on YouTube after. Um, but yeah, let us know what your guys' thoughts are on this. And, uh, and we've we got, will talk to you next time. We oh. will. <laughs> Sorry, kind of cut you off. That's all right. What were you going to say? We've got something coming up. No, I was just saying we got some exciting stuff coming up, I think. Yeah. Got some interesting stuff, some interesting cases, too, I think we're going to tackle here soon. Yes. So get ready for that. But that's it for us today. Thank you for joining us for the Mile Higher Podcast. And we'll talk to you next time.